Actually, the whole festival idea has happened, and to this extent, it all due to Madam Ambassador and our team. The entire embassy, I cannot thank enough, cannot offer gratitude more than that, just <laughs> to say that this all has happened because of you all. Thank you so much for the entire embassy team. For the last 15 days, entire team, is not one person, a whole team has been working. When I first came to Bangkok, we are not a very regular visitor. Perhaps the second time I was in Bangkok, it was quite new. We are not sure how to go about it. The dream was big, and we have no connect in uh, no contact as such. And then I met Ambassador Ma'am and the team, and here we are. Perhaps a result never seen before in the history of Northeast India will happen. Yesterday we have a tour operators meet. 115 tour operators of Thailand participated and 40 tour operators from Northeast India came. And today, the tour operators told me that they have already got bookings. From October onwards, there will be plenty of tourists traveling from Thailand. And one good news let me share with in front of you. From March mid, due to the effort of Assam government, and um, this is one of the most uh, very significant initiative done by Mr. Suresh Prabhuji's office in Ministry of Com uh, Civil Aviation in India and Assam Chief Minister. So regular flight from Guwahati to Bangkok. So we are two hours away from Guwahati, the main capital, uh, the main city of Northeast India. So from October onwards, the main result we're expecting out of this whole Northeast festival, the tourist flow will start and the positive message has started. And this all has happened because of the effort done by the embassy. So once again, thank you so much. So uh, I'll give a small presentation about Northeast India, eight states, 5,182 kilometer boundaries with Myanmar, Bhutan, Nepal, Bangladesh, and China. Around 99% boundaries of Northeast is with ASEAN neighbors. Very diverse place, around 50 million population with 220 language. So it's been long, we are in the periphery of India, connected by 22 kilometer chicken neck to Bengal. This is a peripheral place, Northeast India. With this activist policy initiated by Government of India and a lot of focus by Honorable Prime Minister of India, Northeast is going to change. From the periphery, we are going to be hub of India's relationship with Southeast Asia. This is the geography which made Northeast a very, very attractive proposition for the trade and tourism purpose. And this is the background when we are here. The next part is the connection, revisiting the route the Thai migration and linkage with Northeast India. There'll be detailed discussion today on this. We have some very serious experts coming from Northeast India and we are so privileged to have you amongst us, the top scholars of Thailand. The Thai migration has started in the 11th century and has been continued. And the most dominant tribes of Northeast India, Ahom, ruled Assam for 600 years. Thai Ahoms, Thai Aitans, Thai Kamyang, Thai Turung, Thai Kamti, Thai Fake. We have a substantial Thai presence in Northeast India. Thai Mongolian race, we will discuss in detail, so we are not going to take this slide. Just to give you a background, with this linkage of geography, with this linkage of history, we thought the first Northeast India festival, we should start at Bangkok. That is where we are here for last, yesterday onwards, day for yesterday onwards, and Madam has already explained, Northeast festival is happening outside uh, <coughs> this uh, central wall. So we have a uh, colorful dance performance. After this discussion, we'll take you to the central wall, wherein we'll showcase you Naga warriors are coming, for Sumi Naga warriors. Around 15 members, Sumi Naga warriors are coming. They will perform, they have performing warrior dance. We have got Boru dancers, we have Manipuri dancers, like acrobatic Manipuri dancers. We have got uh, the Tiwa dancers, Bihu dancers, and some spectacular musical performers from Northeast India, who has got a strong connect with the rock music, actually. The Shillong is considered the rock capital of, of India. So we are getting best of rock bands coming here, fashion designers coming here, and a lot of food, Northeast and food, cuisines, Naga, Manipuri, Khasi cuisine, Asmi's cuisine. And, and will showcase the tourism proposition of Northeast India. So uh, after the show, I after the discussion, we would like to take you there and show some of the performances tonight. 
And once again, we offer a sincere gratitude for your kind presence. And this is a beginning. With the blessings of Ambassador Madam, we want to come back. We have to come back stronger. This is the first time we came here. Most of my team members have never visited outside Delhi. So there was a lot of issues, issues of language, issues of understanding. So first time. But second time, we'll come back much bigger. And I'll be needing my ambassadors, madam's blessings, as well as whole team blessing. Next year, we'll come back stronger. And within this financial year, we'll come back with a result, result of trade, this is bilateral trade. That the Commerce Minister, has, uh, Honorable Commerce Minister of Thailand has said that they're sending a trade team to Northeast to explore uh, potentials. And we are talking about trade and tourism bilateral, not one side. We are talking about the both sides. And maybe next year, we'll come back with a report card on the progress made in the last year. Once again, thank you so much. And today's discussion will open up further relationship. And this people-to-people -people re relationship is a critical for our future engagements. We thank you so much. And a small presentation on Northeast Festival for one minute. Manda is there? Yes, yes, Sodapur. Thank you. Uh, we are about to begin the serious session of discussions now. Uh, I call upon Dr. Sangeeta Gogoi, Asso Associate Professor of Mangaldar College under Guwahati University, and Dr. N.G. Mahanta, Director, Center for Southeast Asian Studies, uh, Guwahati University, to give introduction and moderate the sessions further. Thank you, sir. His Excellency, Mrs. Uh, Susit Chadurai, Her Excellency, Mrs. Susit Chadurai, Ambassador of the Republic of India to Thailand, distinguished guest, and our esteemed scholars from various universities of Thailand and our scholars from Northeast region. At the very outset, I would like to welcome you to this session on Northeast India, connecting with Southeast Asia. I'd just like to take three, four minutes, then I'll hand it over to Dr. Sangeeta Gogoi to, uh, to com conduct this program. Well, as I look at it, uh, when we talk about Northeast India, most of the things have already been said. I do not want to repeat it. But it is said that Northeast India is the anthropological museum of India, with more than 275 socio-ethnic groups, 185 languages. This kind of diversity you won't see anywhere, perhaps, in India. And Assam is the last point, it is said, that India looks less and less India, more and more Southeast Asia. And it is said that, you know, Northeast India is anthropologists' delight and policymakers' nightmare. Nevertheless, governments are doing well to manage them in particularly. Look at this diversity. Nowhere in the world, you know, remember, if this 275 groups demand secessionism, United Nations alone would have more than 280 nations, but they're being united. A sense of belonging to mother India, a sense of belonging to each other, that is what binds India, that is what binds Northeast India, in spite of those cultural, anthropological, and linguistic differences. Well, as I look at it, when we talk about relationship between India and Southeast Asia, there are five uh, stages of relationship. The first being, till the 12th century, as all of us know, 
the coming of Hinduism and Buddhism, and we are all aware about that. I do not want to detail it out. The second phase, as I look at it, the phase of colonial phase, when that entered Southeast Asia was conceptualized perhaps by Britain as a war preparatory zone. The third phase began with Nehru, when Nehru tried to develop the concept of Asian solidarity with Bandung Conference. But nevertheless, due to various contradictions of Second World War and post-development of Cold War politics, a sense of solidarity didn't develop. Then the fourth phase, it can be said to have begun with Lukis policy, where various transformation took place in terms of looking at Southeast Asia. But I believe the most vibrant phase had begun with actus policy that tried to look into various trajectories of culture, economics, commerce, and people-to-people -people track tree initiative. Well, already our initiative with Southeast Asia have been highlighted by our Honorable Vice Chancellor from Guwahati University. Uh, we have already developed a program called Indian Studies Program, which is actually a very flexible program. And we have students from Nepal, we have students from Laos, already uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor Sir has talked about it, and we have about 15 students from Thomas State University. There'll be credit transfer, they'll be studying one semester in Guwahati University, and it's not that Guwahati University alone will impart education, we'll take them to various universities. For example, we'll take them to the Buddhist circuit, we'll take to the other parts of Northeast India, particularly we have the Hanson uh, training program, and we'll take our students to the border areas, because Northeast India's 99% border is with South and Southeast Asia. So we'll take them to the Moray border, to have a look at the border point, border trade, border lenders, and border people. So this is a very flexible program to look at the theoretical aspect, to look at culture, to look at Hindu uh, language, and also trade, commerce, and investment. With these words, I welcome all of you. And today, this session will be conducted by Dr. Songita Gogoi, and see her film. She is an ethnographic researcher on history. She has developed a uh, lot of research programs. She has extensively done empirical works in various parts of Southeast Asia. I request you, ma'am, Dr. Sangeeta Gogoi, to conduct the program. Although we have a galaxy of intellectuals from this region, from uh, Thailand, but due to paucity of time, we may not be able to give you much time. But we assure you that we'll come up with a publication and we'll come up uh, within maybe six months, we'll publish one book on the deliberations that take place today. So I request Dr. Sankita Gogoi to hand, I hand it over to her. Good evening, uh, Swadi Krab, Her Excellency, Mr. Chitra Durai, Ambassador of India, Mr. Lakya Kavar, Member Secretary, Government of Assam, Mr. Mridul Hazarika, Vice Chancellor, Guwahati University, Senior Representatives from Northeastern States of India, Senior Historians, Scholars from prestigious universities and univers uh, universities of Thailand, and distinguished guests. I welcome you all to People to People Exchange program, which is part of the first ever Northeast India Festival organized outside India with aim to promote trade, tourism, cultural exchange between Northeast region and Thailand. The festival has been held for two uh, days during 9th and 10th February 2019, and today is the last day of this memorable festival. This promises to be a cerebral session with discussions steered by the intellectuals present here today. I first request Her Excellency, Mr. Chitra Durai, Ambassador of uh, Republic of India to, the Thai to Thailand to uh, give welcome address, please. Mr. Uh, Lakwa Konbar, Thai Home Leader and uh, Member Secretary from the government of Assam in India. Uh, Dr. 
Mridul Hazarika, Vice Chancellor, Guwahati University, Professor Chatip Natsufa, Professor Emeritus of Economic History, Faculty of Economics, Chulalongkorn University, Professor Chirapat Prapandvidya, Fellow of the Royal Society of Thailand and Advisor to the Sanskrit Studies Center, Silpakon University. Associate Professor Surat Horachaikul, Director of the Indian Studies Center of Chulalankon University. Other scholars who have come from both Thailand and from India who have gathered here. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, Sawadika. The Northeast India Festival is the first ever festival of such a scale that uh, the Embassy of India in Bangkok has been privileged to be associated with. And uh, this has been a resounding success uh, from the way things have gone uh, yesterday. The whole day we were busy with many events, both of a, a you know, a closed door nature, as well as the public performances which were open and free to anybody who was walking by Central Bangkok. Um, as many of you would already be aware of, because you're all scholars in this area, the northeast part of India comprises eight beautiful states, having a myriad cultural identities, dance forms, food habits. This region is the board of some of the most prominent tribal groups, such as the Khasis, the Mizos, the Boros, Jaintias, Kacharis, Garos, and many, many others who have not named. It is striking, however, that there is a common cultural thread which runs through them all, and their identities are actually shared with this region, particularly the beautiful country, Thailand. Many of the Northeastern communities in India trace their origin to the Brahmaputra River Basin, including the Thai homes, which is an, um, derived from the Thai people. And they are, you will let us know whether they come from uh, the southern China, which is where they have migrated to Thailand, or they have come from northern Myanmar, because there is one theory that they have come from that side as well. The great Ahom king, Sukapha, started from Southeast Asia and created one of the most successful empires or kingdoms in Assam. He came with a group of about, I think, 10,000 people. And at present, the Ahoms, um, this could be corrected by Mr. Konwar, I believe is about 1.3 million people uh, in the state of Assam. Similarly, the Maite people of Manipur are called Thai Mi, meaning the Thai people by the hill tribes in Manipur. The shared heritage between India and Southeastern, Southeast Asian nation, which range from the Borebodur in Indonesia to Angkor Wat, which is the world's largest temple complex in Cambodia, as well as the similarities between the Thai epic Ramakien, which is based on the Ramayana. These are all links which are very well known and documented. Even some of the festivals like Rongali or Bohag Bihu in Assam, the Pimai in Laos, the Songkran in Thailand, the Sankane in Arunachal Pradesh in India, are similar, being rooted in the same cultural and traditional practices. This cultural heritage of oneness must be built upon for forging stronger ties between Thailand and Northeast India. The Northeast part of India is thus a bridge between India and Southeast Asia, particularly Thailand. In 2014, Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi announced India's Act East policy, which gave 
a further momentum to our own bilateral ties with this region. Particularly with Thailand, I think there have been many scholars who have been interested in studies in India and led most prestigiously by Her Royal Highness herself, Princess Mahachakri Sirindom, who has always displayed a great interest uh, in Northeast India, and which was also manifested by her numerous visits to, her re to the region, including the latest, which took place in November 2018, when she visited both Tripura and Manipur. Further, the trilateral highway project, which is also called, called the Friendship Highway project, between India, Myanmar, and Thailand, is, which is expected to be completed soon, would also go a long way in rejuvenating these deep bonds between our peoples. I'm very happy that the Northeastern Council, under the uh, Government of India's Ministry of the Development of the Northeast Region, Donner, has taken this initiative along with Trend MMS, which has been headed by Mr. Shamakant Mahatta, uh, and to bring back the glory of Northeast India right to the heart of Bangkok. I would like to particularly thank all the state governments of Northeast India for having supported the festival, all the artists and the scholars who have come here all the way. Many of them have already performed and they have participated in different sessions and they won the hearts of the people here. As well as all the senior officials who have, and leaders who have graced these functions with their presence. I would be remiss if I did not take this opportunity because this is the last serious, I think, session that we have uh, of a formal nature, let us put it that way, not that's, the rest of it is also very serious, but of a formal nature of this kind. If I did not take this opportunity to thank my entire team, led by Deputy Chief of Mission, Ramu, who have put together, in fact, they've put their heart and soul in the last few weeks on this festival, because that is when we came to be associated with this event. The Embassy of India has endeavored to build upon the people-to-people -people ties at various levels of engagements, and we're very happy to be associated with the Northeast India Festival, which we believe would go a long way in developing and revitalizing the people-to-people -people bonds between these two regions and countries. Thank you very much, Koponka. Thank you, Your Excellency, for those informative words. Now I call upon Mr. Lakya Kumar, Thai Ahom leader and member secretary, government of Assam, for his address. Honorable Mistress Durai, Ambassador of Republic of India to Thailand, Sri Mridul Hazarika, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Guwahati University. Renowned scholars from both the countries present here and other dignitaries in this August house. I won't take much time because it is a very serious discussion. People to people exchange from both the countries. It will be a very serious technical session. So uh, first of all, I would like to I will uh, take this opportunity to extend my government's gratitude to Royal Thai government and Indian Embassy on behalf of uh, our Chief Minister, Mr. Sarvanand Sunwal, he is expressing his gratitude that this kind of first people-to-people uh, -people exchange and Northeast India Festival is being organized in the capital of Thailand, Bangkok. Uh, it is successful all because of the relentless work of the chief organizer, Samkanu Mohanta. Uh, we popularly know him as Kanuda. Uh, not only him, uh, I congratulate on this occasion his dedicated team also. So we all know Thailand uh, has a uh, special bondage with northeastern part of the country, northeastern part of India, especially with Assam. I being a uh, Thai at home youth, I know what is the linkage between Thailand and uh, 
uh, India, especially Assam. I belong to a village very near to Myanmar border. So many Thai scholars used to visit my place, uh, perhaps three, four times a year for their studies with the linkages with Thailand and Thai people in Assam. So we all know that uh, in 1215 AD, our great leader, Saulung Sukafa, started his journey as advised by his maternal grandmother, grandmother in search of a new land. After a journey of 1127 kilometers for 13 years, in 2028 AD, he arrived Assam. And then he called Assam to be Mundung Shunkham, the land of golden crops. But later, we all know it is called Assam. And then with the assimilation with all local tribes, a new, perhaps I may be wrong, but my uh, uh, study in history, how far I know, a new Thai race has been created there. It is called Ahum, that is Thai Ahum. And we have a, a very special linkage with uh, Thailand as because as he left Mung Mao, later because of some Chinese aggression, Chinese invasions, Sukafa's siblings, they migrated towards Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam. And most of them, uh, uh, of the, the siblings of Sukafa, nowadays we found them to be in Myanmar and Thailand. So I cordially, on behalf of my government, I invite, we will be very happy to host Thai people in our place, in our state, in Assam. My, our government is eagerly waiting, uh, uh, these days, uh, actually, we are hosting you know, so many cultural troops, literary troops. Uh, Dr. Sangeeta Gugu is very much aware of I mean, leading all the Assamese Thai troops to Thailand. Uh, because we are having similar, some similar traditions, as Ambassador Madam, uh, Madam said, we celebrate our New Year at the same time. We have some same cultural rituals. Our food habits are same. And uh, the agricultural practice are also same. The wetland agriculture you do practice here, the same uh, wetland agriculture at, uh, practice we do there in the part of the country. And <coughs> since last few years, uh, I mean uh, more than a decade, we are really happy that with the tire homes in Assam, we celebrate Madame Mephi. That is the ancestral uh, worship for the welfare of the country. And you always, the Thai people, you always send, a cult uh, send so many cultural troops to our uh, this celebration. This year also, uh, the Madam Mephi celebrated by our own state government, uh, there were the cultural troop uh, in this celebration. So I won't take uh, much of your time. I congratulate uh, Trend MMS and I extend my gratitude again to Indian Embassy and Royal Thai Government. And with this word, I conclude my speech. Thank you. Thank you very much. In his remarks. Good afternoon. Madam Shuchitra Durai, Honorable Ambassador of India to Thailand. Mr. Lek Kakwar, Member Secretary, Government of Assam. Very distinguished scholars sitting here. Our scholars from Thailand as well as from India. Ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to represent my university in this very special program which is happening for the first time in this country. Well, if we look at the ethnotist India, the developmental trajectory of northeast India got highest momentum after the en active engagement of India in Southeast Asia. And this is something very important. And this type of programs will bring us much closer and understand each other 
and deeper understanding of our sentiments, I'm sure we will have to move together joining hands. And that is very important for really uh, establishment of the, our relationship between this region. Those separate as nations and regions, Southeast Asia and countries and Northeast India really bond over similarities. And the similarities are many, as, as mentioned by Madame Durai as well as Mr. Korn. I don't want to dwell on this again. But this cultural and other relationship in terms of the, our overall relations that we had, if you look back to the revisit the history, and we understand that we have to really reponder over how best we can strengthen this relationship in the days to come. Well, the Gohati University is having a dedicated center for Southeast Asian studies, headed by Professor Nodigopal Mohanta. And our whole objective is to ensure that we really bring about the people-to-people -people contact and as far as the Southeast Asia is concerned. And at our level, educational level, our intellectual level, we have been able to bring about people-to-people -people contact, uh, I mean contact over the last couple of years. And I trust that this program will make Gohati University as a destination for Southeast Asian countries for our intellectual exercise. And I assure you that we will provide a platform for intellectual engagement in our university. Kohati University is very old and leading university in Northeast India. This is the 26th university in the country. Now there are 800 universities. And this is a leading university with A grade university in India. And I, I feel that our university can take a leading role in establishing the relationship between the two Southeast regions, Northeast India and Southeast Asia. And we are having 48 departments in the India and 350 colleges with 300,000 students. And I must mention that the engagement we had with Southeast Asia and a large part of the uh, credit goes to our people around those who are root in Assam. And, and therefore, we have to ensure that this continuity remains. And another very important aspect, which I would like to mention here today, is the fact that we are engaging in some flexible programs in the university. This now recently, we have designed a program for, for students of Thailand. And consequent on this, the students from Thamasat University is, is in our university for six months program on Indian studies. And we are trying to ensure flexibility to ensure that the students from Southeast Asia make Gohati University as a, a destination. And we must also mention that we are not only working on the Indian cultures and traditions, but latest technologies are also extremely important for us. And we will be the fourth university in the world to have the artificial intelligence BTEC MTEC program from August this year. And I invite students from Thailand to join this artificial intelligence program in our university. An increasing impact of knowledge as a driver of growth, I need not re emphasize. And human resource development is what all the Southeast Asian countries are emphasizing in the recent time because of the fact that this is the key for developing the whole nation. This is the key for uh, to enter the knowledge economy and global environment. And I'm sure 
that we have a great role to play as educational institutions. And I, this is the best way that people-to-people -people contact can be established. I must mention that in establishing people-to-people -people contact, uh, Mr. Habib Muhammad has a tremendous role as far as our Guwahati University is concerned. Lao student visited our university, and he has been incessantly trying to ensure a linkage between the root from where he is. And that is why I must acknowledge his effort in this forum. I, and I won't speak much because as Madam Ambassador said, there is a very serious program. And all of you are waiting to engage in serious discussion and coming, coming out with new concepts for people-to-people -people relationship, or strengthening the people-to-people -people relationship in this, uh, these two parts of the world. And therefore, I'm sure that next few hours will be highly exciting, meaningful, and useful for all of us. And one thing at the end, I assure you, that you will enjoy making Gohati University as a destination for higher education, as a destination for cultural exchange, as a destination for intellectual engagement. And this is what I assure you, I'll ensure all facilities to the students from Southeast Asia. Thank you very much. Uh, they say proof of uh, pudding isn't eating it. And uh, we've had to put extra chairs in this session. So it shows the interest that uh, uh, today's session has generated. As Ma'am had mentioned already, uh, this has been a resounding success so far. And uh, today's session uh, two is going. Uh, we are ha having to put extra chairs. And the man behind this effort uh, is Mr. Shan Kam uh, Sham Kanu Mahat uh, Mahanta. And uh, he wants to give a small presentation today on uh, how this festival was conceived and what he has to say about Northeast. So I please uh, invite him to give a small presentation. Uh, Suchitra Durai. And uh, Mr. Lakaya Konva. And uh, Professor Moritu Asarika. Uh, Professor Nani Kopo Mahanta, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Sankita Kokoi, uh, Indian and Thai scholars, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On January 12, 2019, I received an, an email from Professor Sankita Kokoi inviting me to give a presentation on today's seminar on the occasion of Northeast India Festival. She asked me to talk about Thai Ahum and Thai relationship. I was very happy to humbly accept her invitation because of the very names she mentioned in the email. Professor Jokendra Nath Pukan and Guwahati University. Professor Pukan is the first Assam scholar whom I happen to know in New Delhi in 1981 at the first Thai Study International Conference. We have been good friends ever since. Almost Ten years later, in 1990, I had a memorable visit to Assam. Professor Pukan suggested the Eastern Thai 
Literary Association invite me and my Thai colleagues to to watch some. And I had the opportunity to give a talk. I just told the Vice Chancellor, I gave a lecture at Gauti University in 1990. That was memorable too. And after uh, the lecture, I was uh, taken to visit the Assam, especially Northeast Assam, the, the northeastern part, Upper Assam, you call. We, uh, we were accompanied by Professor Pukan, Professor Buspa Kokoi, and Mr. Haken Natsarika, Hasarika of the Thai Association. And we stopped at Kolakat and Jorahat. And all our destination was Sipsaka and then on to Dibuga. Uh, the city of Sipsaka had a rather dense settlement of ethnic Thai. We traveled to the ancient city of Jiraidoi, Kakon, and Rangapu. Uh, Rangapu was the uh, capital of uh, the Assam, their home kingdom in, uh, from the 13th century to uh, 19th century. And finally, we went to uh, Dipuka on the bank of the Brahmaputta River. Altogether, eight days. We were fortunate to have such knowledgeable scholars accompanying us. And we, at Gohati, we went to uh, the Department of Historical and Antiquarian Studies and inspected the uh, home manuscripts. And, and at Zipsaka, we visited the Thai Museum at Zipsaka. And we visited, we visited in, ad, in addition to Gauti University, Dibuka University too. And indeed, that studies tour changed my outlook on many aspects of the socio-cultural history of the Thai people. Ever since that trip, I have continued to study history and the evolution of uh, Thai culture, not only in Thailand, but uh, Thai outside Thailand, India, one place, China, uh, uh, Myanmar, Vietnam, uh, <coughs> include, included. And after that trip, I returned to Assam four, more, four times. Last time in 2013. Now I would like to Ooh. summarize my what I have done, my research. I wrote uh, uh, two books uh, on, on the Thai of Assam. My uh, research is to uh, study uh, their home Thai and how this would illuminate the, my understanding of uh, uh, culture of Thailand of today. And also I would like to understand the connection between Assam and, and Southeast Asia and Thailand particularly. The method is to study the historical documents uh, at the high of the Ahom Kingdom, 
uh, 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 the home people uh, uh, rule over the state of Assam for about 600 years. I read, uh, my colleague and I, I, I cannot read the uh, home script, but my colleague uh, were able to. And together, uh, we, we went over the manuscript, and I talked to the yeah, home scholars, and I consulted other uh, documents. So the method uh, of my study was uh, historical method particularly, but I travel uh, to various places in Assam as well. Now I talk about the findings of the, of the research, two findings particularly. First finding, the entire home people uh, established a kingdom in Assam for 600 years. Uh, in their first 100, 300 years, they still use the home language, but in the last 300, they utilized the Assamese language, which uh, was a mixture of uh, uh, Thai language and other uh, Austro-Asiatic language, languages of the area, and uh, Sanskrit language and other language. Uh, the people from India proper brought with them. And they developed an economic system with sophisticated irrigation system for rice agriculture. And as you know, after the Second World War, uh, Assam became a part of India. And that now today, the Ahum do not use the Thai language in their everyday life. But let me tell you this. I was very surprised. In the rituals, they still use the uh, Thai language. One evening, many, many years ago, I participated in the ritual paying respect to, to the God of the sky. And the Ahum people, they recited in the, in the Thai language, which I understood some 30%. I was very surprised and very glad, so they still at least uh, uh, retain some of the language and culture. And allow me to tell you too that uh, uh, depart the SAS, the Department of Historical and Antiquarian Study in Gauhati, uh, the, uh, the department still keep the the manuscript in the uh, Thai language, uh, which uh, of which we Thai scholar can go and study. Very prestigious document. Also at the Thai Museum in uh, Sipsaka. I have to go rather quickly. The second finding is the Thai home people highly value the importance of nature, environment, family, and kinship. I have no time to go into detail, but this is something not uh, quite, not, not the same as uh, uh, Hinduism. So uh, uh, the god of the uh, home, uh, the, the gods uh, are the the their ancestor and the uh, ordinary people that have left them uh, uh, they do not have the 
very elaborated uh, rituals as the uh, the uh, Hindu the Hindu people. Uh, this is a uh, we can we can uh, uh, study the religion and belief, which is uh, quite similar to uh, uh, the worship of the spirit, which we in Thailand uh, still very much retain. I have to go over rather quickly. Now, about the present day connection, uh, uh, the Northeast region of India holds a special promise. Uh, historically, the ethnic Thai people, as you know, migrated from Yunnan and northern Burma to establish uh, settlement now in uh, India, at some in particular, but other states in other states of Northeast India as well. The Kamti, not only the Ahom, the Kamti people, they are staying in uh, Arunachon and uh, some other Thai, they are staying in Manipur. About the total number, there are various estimations. Uh, 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 the highest, let me, as a Thai, I say the highest. The highest are three million, but maybe one, say one, two, three, but uh, highest estimation, three million. And of this, uh, uh, about 500,000, uh, they, they are the other Shan uh, 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 related uh, uh, people moving in later than the Ahom people. Uh, these Shan related people, they still speak Thai in their everyday life. And their uh, number at least 500,000. Maybe more if we include not only those in uh, in uh, the uh, Assam state. If we include those in uh, Arunachon uh, and other state, more uh, than 500,000. Uh, all these group, these uh, let's say three million uh, or less. Uh, all these have an overlapping history, spiritual belief, and common language, uh, and conduct, they are conduct, conduct, conducting animistic rituals and ancient ceremonies. And there is a strong sense of pride among these people about their heritage, and they are eager and their neighbors, huh? they are eager to have links with other, with people in Southeast Asia. And there is a, even a program uh, in uh, Dibuka University uh, and the Institute of Thai Study in Moranhat, in Assam, uh, teaching a Thai Thai, Thai language, Thai of Thailand and maybe other uh, Thai uh, of other Thai ethnic groups in these two institutions. And I'm very glad uh, uh, at Gauhati University there's more interest on a study, study to, uh, to open a study on Southeast Asia. Uh, and that present with India, look his and act his policies. The vision is an economic corridor between Northeast India, China. We have to bring in China. China interested very much in uh, the Northeast India. Uh, China, uh, ASEAN countries, Thailand in particular, Myanmar also bothering Northeast uh, India. 
to boost trade and to promote historical and cultural connections. Thus, this region of the subcontinent can be viewed as our neighbor with a population equivalent to uh, at least uh, uh, one is uh, bigger than many countries of uh, the, the ASEAN uh, uh, members. And for the people of, South e of uh, Northeast India, I think they are eager for contact with the countries of ASEAN because our share history and culture, and plus the uh, fact that these countries are uh, located inside uh, the continent, no, uh, not bothering uh, an ocean, so they would like to have a way to come out uh, of, the, of the location. And through Southeast Asia, that's uh, one very good possibility. And these linkages could be very dangerous to expand the, the relation in many uh, dimensions. May I have this, maybe another two or three minutes, I just want to show about 10 slides. How can I go on? Please help me. This, uh, uh, I just, I, I have, oh, before the slide, let me show you this book. This book is evident of a, a cross connection. It was sent to me just one month ago by my friend, Professor Jirin Pugon, director of the uh, uh, Thai Research Center, Moranhat. Title of the book, Ties of Northeast India and Southeast Asia, a study of ethno-cultural linkage. Professor Jirin Pugan uh, used to be, uh, he, he is now director of the, that institute, but formerly he was uh, uh, a, a professor of political science Dibuka University, he is in a home, and he just wrote this. I read it, it's, I guarantee you, it's an excellent book. Uh, uh, and he talked not only Thai, and Thai of Northeast India and Thailand, Thai of South China as well. So uh, coverage is very wide. Let me show you some slides. This is a, a Sam. Go on, please. How? Oh, oh. Ah, look, Agis is the following. Eh? Look, is Agis. Okay. Ah, and uh, okay, go on. The area, and this is the Department of uh, Historical and Antiquarian Study, uh, where ancient document of the Northeast India uh, were kept, and uh, one section. It's called a home section, and I inspected the, the, the documents over there. Uh, and just formerly, there were two uh, scholars of uh, Assam, uh, uh, Yehom and Nabin, who can read a uh, home script studying the document, but I think now they retired. I hope uh, the department has some more people. Dr. Sangita, maybe you suggest some people to, because the home section is there. And uh, Dr. Pukan used to uh, collect uh, documents for this uh, department. Go on. Oh, this is an emblem of uh, the flag too of the home kingdom. Okay, okay, one. Oh, there's some ceremonies, a home ceremony. Oh, this one on your right side, this is a burial place, Te Ravidoi, near Sipsaga. 
Okay, some, yeah, you can see the na. We call it na culture. Na culture is a wet right culture, starting by, well, still controversy, but one theory is that the Thai people started the na culture, which cover Southeast Asia, South China, South of the Yangtze, and Northeast India. So na culture widespread over Asia. Maybe the Thai people initiated it, na culture. Which right culture? This is Rangapu, Jehum, near Zipsaka, capital of the Ahom Kingdom. Go on, please. This is uh, the building uh, where, on the left, where the, uh, the, uh, the, how you call it, the tomb, the, the, the penbrim, the, 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 the signs of the kingdom kept, but this, this, uh, 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 this is a very important because at the, uh, the uh, when the king of Atsa, king of Ahom ascended the throne, this kind of thing uh, had to be taken and put around the neck. Uh, this one kept in that ruined tomb that uh, uh, the, the sign the, uh, of the kingdom, go on. And this is another building near uh, the capital. This is the capital of our home kingdom. This one is a building where uh, the royalties and uh, uh, official went to look over the ceremony and, and the spots of the kingdom. Go on, please. Oh, this you can see when we visited Assam, the people of Assam, especially their home, they line up uh, and uh, welcome us. They were very happy, people from Thailand and Southeast Asia visiting them many years ago. This. One. This is the Thai Museum. Uh, the government of Assam, uh, they, 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 they spend money on, on, on the Thai people. That's very, very good. Uh, establishing, establishing a museum of a Thai culture in Sipsaka, the capital, the, the former capital of the home kingdom. This is a Thai museum. Some document of a Thai home kingdom kept over there. Oh, the, a Thai scholar of the past, Sang, who studied about the home people. Go on. Uh, Professor Bantop, who studied. So we had a tradition of uh, study of uh, uh, the the home kingdom and the Thai of at Assam and uh, Myanmar and uh, connection this uh, corridor of cultural and historical connection. Uh, she was a, a professor of Thai language of Chan uh, Kesem University. She has she passed away. Go on, please. Ah, this uh, nap. The person on the right, Nabin Sayam, Fa Luong, uh, Thai Pak, I think Thai Pake or Turung, I'm not sure. What? Tham Ka, huh? Oh, Thai Kam Yang, uh, who work at the uh, department, DHS. Huh? And when we visited uh, the DHS, he showed uh, Ajahn Renu, Ajahn Renu, uh, Associate Professor. Chiang Mai University of Thai language. We inspected the, the manuscript, and uh, this manuscript were, were put, we were, were kept, uh, still, still keeping. Uh, this uh, still, uh, you can find at the uh, uh, Department of Antiquarian and Historical Study of, uh, of uh, uh, Kuwaiti. 
But this picture was taken 1990, but still now still there. So those who would like to study uh, Thai culture of uh, the home kingdom, this uh, manuscript valuable. Go on, please. Ah, Nang Ye Hom, Nang Ye Hom, Pake, Pake, Thai Pake, who can read their home script, formerly working at uh, department, but now retired. Now any person, any scholar? Maybe you find some more, some other people later. Go on, please. Oh, this is uh, the person who made my, uh, who, who invited me, Professor Pugan. Uh, this was taken about six or seven years ago when I visited Kohati uh, the last time, uh, six or seven years ago. This picture uh, taken at Asok Pomobut uh, Hotel, Pugan and myself, about seven, six or seven years ago. Professor Chen Pukan, the, the uh, professor of history, retired of Kohati University. Now, uh, now chairman of the uh, Thai Home Development Council of the government of Assam. Yeah, go on. And this is a, a classical book, a classic book, a uh, very good book, Sir Edward Kate, History of Assam. <coughs> People who study Assam, not East India, should, or well, everybody knows, every scholar knows this book. And in Englishman, uh, who study at some very thoroughly, including their home kingdom, history of Assam. Uh, this is a book uh, my colleague and I put out after our visit in 1990. I think Mr. Konwa mentioned, uh, yeah, Mengnun uh, Sunkam. That's uh, a home language in. Uh, Meaning of uh, uh, the kingdom of Assam. Yeah, go on. Ah, this one. A home manuscript uh, translated uh, into Thai. A uh, home Buranji uh, translated while keeping. Tran what is the word? Not just translate, but just word to word. Uh, Transliterate, yeah, transliteration, and also translated into Thai. So we can, by reading this transliterated, uh, go back to the the, the root of uh, Thai culture in the uh, ancient Thai language, uh, Thai language, Thai script, Ahum Buranji, transliterated. Yeah, okay, by by uh, associated Renu Vishasin. I have to tell you, she is a, a scholar who can read a home language. So she is very special. And she and I together wrote this book, A Study of a Thai Home People, Renu and myself. Thank you. I'm sorry I took so much of your time. I'm very happy and I'm glad. <laughs> I was invited. Thank you, Dr. Sankita. Thank you, respected Natsupa sir, for your detailed experience and sharing our experience and also research work on our homes. Uh, now, I, now uh, I call Professor Chattip, uh, sorry, uh, Chirapat Prabandavidya sir for your presentation, and he is going to speak on uh, resources of studies in resources for studies in Northeast India. Yeah. Uh, Your Excellency, 
มาดามสุจิตราดุไรมิตรรามูดีเซียมธรรมเสียวินเดียพระพุทธัสสริกาอาเกาหลียูนิเวอร์ซิตี้ไวชันเซลล์ออฟเกาหลียูนิเวอร์ซิตี้ดิสติงกิสเกสดิสติงกิสคอลาและเลดี้สันเจนเมนฉันแค่เป็นอเมริกันฉันไม่ใช่นักวิจัยฉันวิจิตฉันอ่านหนังสือที่เขียนโดยพระพุทธเจ้าชัดกาเลมันไตบายดรบรรจบพันธุเมธาเวนไอวอสเอกรดูเอตสตูเดนต์ไอเมดอัพไมไมฟรอมเดตไทม์ออนเดตเวนเวนไอวิสิตอินเดียไอมัสโกทูอาซามทูซีเดไทยพีเพิลสโอไอเฟิร์สวิสิตอาซามอินไนทีนเซเวนทีเดอะเซคันด์เยียร์อัพไมสตูดีในอินเดีย At Baroda, so at that time, Kauhati is not like Kauhati nowadays. <laughs> nowadays is much developed. Uh, I just want to suggest what you can do, what you can research in Assam by showing some picture I've taken during my uh, few visit to Assam and Arunachal Pradesh. And made some observation on that. This is the one of the oldest temple in Gauhati. This is Kamakya Temple, which is uh, considered to me the most sacred temple, Hindu temple, maybe in Assam, in Kamrup, which is the ancient name of Assam. Uh, it is supposed to be the one of the Shakti Pita, that means the the seat of the goddess of power. It was mentioned in the Purana that Lord Shiva carried the body of Sati, who was uh, burned herself in fire, and while he traveling on the uh, in the sky, the private part of the Sati dropped. At this plate, that's why it become one seat of the sacred power of the of the sati, the first wife of Shiva. And you will be surprised that if you go to this temple, anyone can enter. Not not like any other Hindu temple in India, those who are not Hindu may not be allowed to enter. But here, is it open for all? Uh, this is uh, I. This is a pujari in one of the shrine in the temple. You can see that is the pose for to sacrifice and a goat to the god. This is the different building in the temple. If you want to see the uh, the most sacred part, you have to go down deep in underground. I have been there once, but later on, <laughs> no chance to go there <laughs> because there there are many uh, the crowd. Are, if you don't have any, a, a special arrangement, you have to wait there to hours. But by the arrangement of Professor Sankita, I could go and see there. <laughs> There is another temple in the Great River of Brahmaputta, which is a Shiva temple. So, this is the temple of Shiva, the husband of Sati of uh, Kamakya. This is called Umananda. I happened to meet a scholar of a home. He presented me a book. By the introduction by Professor Sankita, this is also one scholar from Kauhati University. She is the head of the Department of History. She came to Bangkok, and I asked her to give a lecture at our Sanskrit Study Center. Uh, we have learned a lot about the history of art of uh, Assam, of our, of our home people, 
They have a very good museum there in Kauhati. This is uh, Dr. Sankita. <laughs> uh, by her guy also, we have visited the community of the Thai at home and the, the um, uh, Michael Sumfai, the, the three, three pillar, they will burn it during the night in a festival. This is the typ uh, typical house of the Thai, uh, Thai Kamti. This is also the spirit house, but they call it Sir Mueng, which is also known in Thai language. Sir Mueng is the protector of the country. This is Professor Sankita again. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here is the, <laughs> at a temple in Arunachal Pradesh, belong to the, the Thai Kamti. The, the, the name of the temple is, uh, it ending with Kam, Kam in golden. Kong Mu Kam, it means uh, golden pagoda. This is another uh, typical house of the Thai, Thai Kamti. So I, this is an old lady of the Kamti. I have to dread like this so that nobody knows that I'm Thai <laughs> <laughs> from, from Thailand. So this is the granary of the Kamti people. This is another festival of, of the Thai, Thai, uh, Thai people in Assam at the Michael Sumfai. Uh, this is the temple in uh, Nam Sum. Nam Sai, Nam Sai. They, they also have Nam Sum. Nam Sum means Nam Som. The river of Nam Som. That means the, the, the water in the river is sour. The Som means sour. Uh, this is the temple, the same temple. Kong Mu Kham. This is the temple, but is it Burmese Thai? Professor uh, Sankita again. There is only one monk in the temple. Next week. This is the name of the, the temple. Uh, now we have visited the uh, research center in Arunachan Pradesh about Thai. So we visited the, the house of the ex-minister of Arunachal Pradesh. This is a group photo with uh, his wife. This is his wife. So this is the monk of uh, Burmese monk for a uh, visit near Tinsukia. These are the dress when the people go to the temple. This is, uh, they welcome us. So, Dr. Sankita give, give speech. Here, I, I took photo with the, this is maybe uh, Singapore? Singapore. <laughs> ah, this is the typical house of the Kamti people. This is the inside the house. Oh, I, then I have visited a festival of the Singapore people. They, they came just like come to the marketplace and <coughs> show their uh, beautiful dresses. Here, the warrior of the Singapore. This is the beautiful lady of the Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the food served by the Singapore people. These are the same uh, girl from the Singapore community in their very beautiful uh, dresses. 
This is uh, in the same place when, when they give us fees. This is the ex-minister of the Arunachal Pradesh. This is the food served by, he hold us dinner. So in Assam, you will find tea garden everywhere. This is the worker of the tea garden, the dance, who welcome us. Ah, uh, the uh, home people, most of them are wise and wise, but instead of being completely wise and wise, they also perform the traditional ritual, not, not completely Hindu, but tradition also observed. These are the women, they separate from the men. This is the, the dance, Bihu. This is the dance. And this is Sir Kafa, the first king of the Ahom. In the museum, mentioned by Professor Satipna Subha. This is the cause of king of the Ahom. This is the palace, which is shown also by Professor Chattip, the palace of the Ahom king. This is the Rang Mahan, which is shown Rangpura, Rangkhat, Rangkhat, where the kings see the sport and game. That's all. So after seeing this, you can see that there are many things can do research on the many subjects in, uh, in Assam, in Northeast India, maybe ethnic belief, maybe uh, Hindu belief, and how the Ahom people are converted into Hinduism, which is very similar to Thailand. The Thailand also believe in spirit, but in Sukhothai Thai period, we accept first Hinduism, Buddhism, but later on we accept mostly Hindu, uh, Buddhism. And the way of life, we, we perform or practice according to Buddhism. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your illuminating presentation. Uh, we have a galaxy of speakers, distinguished speakers today. So I would like to request all our distinguished speakers uh, to make the presentation maybe in 10 or 12 minutes because of paucity of time. <laughs> Kindly excuse us because of, you know, strict. And as uh, we assure you, uh, we are going to publish this uh, a volume on the people-to-people -people contact. And I'm sure this book will be edited later on uh, with peer review. So now I would like to request Dr. Sambat uh, Magna Sri, Sanskrit Study Center, Silpakorn University. Uh, title is Kaziranga National Park as a Role Model of Safari Tourism for Thailand. Uh, I welcome you, sir, and uh, kindly try to make your presentation in the stipulated period of time. Sorry. Your Excellency, Madam Sujitra Dulai, uh, uh, Mr. Apagri Ramu DCM, uh, Professor uh, Hasariga, uh, Guwahati University, uh, distinguished scholars from Thailand and from India, uh, distinguished guests, students, ladies and gentlemen, uh, because I have given only, <laughs> I have been given only five or 10 minutes, uh, so I will be faster. <laughs> uh, my topic is Kasiranga National Park of Assam as the role model of safari tourism for Thailand. This, I select this uh, topic because uh, actually uh, I think that all eminent scholar will talk about people, but uh, I will talk about the tourism uh, in the aspect of tourism, uh, tourism today. I will present you some uh, information. 
Uh, the main point for me, within five or seven minutes, I will talk about where is Gasiranga National Park to let uh, Thai people to know where is the Gasiranga. And the second point is Gasiranga National Park as the uh, natural uh, world heritage. Sorry, I forgot my class now. <laughs> <laughs> Member Secretary of Government of Assam and all other distinguished guests and scholars present here from Thailand and other northeastern uh, states and also of Thailand. So uh, as we are uh, running out of time, so it is a very limited period of time. So we have to make, uh, we have already 12 speakers here. So we better start uh, the program. But only a few words I want to say that is, uh, this is a dream project of mine that has been materialized today. Since my uh, 10 to 12 years of research work, when I am traveling very frequently to different countries of Southeast Asia, what I have marked that the people of Northeast India has very much similar ethnically, linguistically to this part of uh, Southeast Asia and particularly Thailand. And in Northeast India, particularly Assam, we have a very good linkages through the Thai group. Uh, the Thai Ahom and other five groups of Thai migrated from Southeast Asia to Northeast India, and they are living in Assam, Manipur, and Onasal as well. So we have some very uh, similarities in respect of culture and language. So it is a good time that we gather together. I think this is the first of its kind, the seminar is um, happening here, and I'm very much thankful to Mr. Shamkanu Mahanto to giving me such a good opportunity to make my dream realized. And also, I'm grateful to Guwahati University, uh, Midul Hazarika Sar, and the Director of Southeast Asian Studies, Dr. Noni Gopal Mahanto, giving me to coordinate this seminar. So we start with, uh, we have the present presenters. Uh, we start, we, we are giving, we are giving very small, uh, short time, because we don't have that much of time, so, but uh, as uh, Mahanta Sar has uh, mentioned that we need your final preparation, final presentation, so for the pub uh, future publication. So we're now going to start with uh, Professor Emeritus Satip Nath Supa Sar for your presentation. I think he is a pioneer in the study of Taya home and Thailand, yes. This is the map of Assam. You will see the Guwahati, the cap uh, capital city of Assam, and the Johat, the city jo of Johat. Kasinaka is in between. And this is the uh, map of Kasiranga National Park that I have got from uh, internet. You see, we see the river Brahmaputra and the so big river. Uh, I have uh, been visit the Burga. Uh, so uh, I just back from Assam 10 days ago. So my memory is quite fresh. I have seen Brahmaputra <laughs> is so big. You see, uh, with my colleagues, uh, Dr. Uten, I asked him, oh, I would like to see Pamaputta River for the first time. This is my first time in Assam. He said, why would you like to see only the river? We will go to see the uh, Bokabil Bridge also. <laughs> so it's really, really long bridge, five uh, kilometer bridge. So I'm really happy when I come back. So I think, oh, I have to talk about the Pamaputta, but because I have no time, so I will talk about only <laughs> Kasiranga. Eh? Uh, this is the map of Kasiranga. You will see the, a lot of animals, especially the wild animals in the map, uh, on the map. So uh, the highlight of Kasiranga, what is the highlight? The park hosts two-thirds of the world's great one-horned rhinoceros. Kasiranga also is the highest density of tigers among the protected area in the world and was declared a tiger reserve in 2006. The park is home to large breeding population of elephants, white water buffalo, and swam deer. I will show you this. This is the rhinoceros. 
and uh, the, you can get these female rhinoceros for sure because the small, small rhinoceros. There's, uh, and another picture is this uh, closer, this rhinoceros, one horn rhinoceros. This is uh, this the highlight of Kasirianga National Park because the one horn rhinoceros is uh, very, very rare, uh, can be found in the world, but two thirds can be found only in Kasirianga. Uh, another uh, uh, animal that is wild animal you can see uh, wild elephants, wild water buffalo, also <coughs> in the Kasiranga National Park. Kasiranga uh, as safari tour and ecotourism. A safari is an overland journey, usually a trip by tourists in Africa. In the past, the trip was often a big game hunt, but today safari are often to observe and photograph wildlife or hiking the sightseeing as well. Uh, with the view to promote the ecotourism, especially safari tour like that in Africa, Indian government by the Northeastern Council NEC always support the wildlife tour in Kasirianga National Park in Assam, uh, where the one horn rhinoceros are the highlight that I already mentioned. The elephant safari or chief safari to trace the, uh, and shoot the rhinoceros with cameras, not by, with gun, eh? uh, is one of the unforgettable e experience. This is the example of co-living between endangered species and human be uh, being. Uh, I will show my uh, photo with my groups. Uh, there are lots of uh, scholars from Assam and so join our trip last uh, uh, 10 days ago. Uh, this is the main entrance to Kasiranga National Park. You can see uh, the statue of rhinoceros also, a rhino, one, one horn rhino. Uh, the chief safari uh, by BB uh, Selfie at the time uh, without, <laughs> without rhino, <laughs> only on the chief. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I've been showing you all the pictures. Uh, on the jeep, uh, we try to trace the rhino. You see, far away, backside, that is rhino. No? <laughs> uh, it's, you can uh, see that is rhino. We can get closer because the, uh, for, for safety. Uh, because they, uh, they said, oh, if you go quite closer, it is your own risk. <laughs> so, uh, safari tourism in Thailand, I come to uh, the last uh, main point. If we would like to uh, follow our Indian counterparts to uh, run the safari tourism in Thailand, is it possible? Because in Thailand, the Kai such ecotourism is not so popular in Thailand. Uh, so. Uh, next, when I write my paper, I would like to attempt to encourage Thai people uh, who also have natural world heritage sites like uh, Khao Yai National Park and Hue Ka Kang National Park in the west. Uh, Khao Yai is in the uh, central Thailand. Uh, I would like Thai people who also have national world heritage sites like India to follow their Indian counterparts to promote the safari tourism in Thailand. This is my paper. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Sambat. Now we call uh, Professor Dr. Rajan Singh Raisham from Manipur University. He's from Northeast India. He has to speak his, to give his presentation. Yeah, Dr. Rajan Singh Raisham. Yeah. Uh, Sawadi and Namaskar. In fact, I was under the impression that uh, it is supposed to be an interaction program. But let me speak on the India-Myanmar India trilateral highway. My experience in the past two, three uh, years, we have been traveling, exploring the actual uh, condition of the road and what is happening around. Uh, 
my interest in Thailand uh, traced back to my student days at Baroda as professor was in the 1980. Uh, we, I had few classmates. Uh, of course, I have lost trace because those days we don't have social media. But I still take interest. And of course, second, my interest on Southeast Asia is because of my uh, PhD topic on China and Southeast Asia. That was my topic. And my interest on India-Myanmar trilateral highway is precisely because I come from a place called Manipur, which is a landlocked country. I mean, landlocked region, not country. I mean, and uh, there is a lot of political unrest, so we are always in sort of supply, foodstuffs, clothes, and shelter. So we are looking for alternative because we have some entrepreneurs. They have encouraged us to explore possible ways of opening uh, other uh, supply routes, not necessarily, you know. Uh, I mean, through uh, you see uh, other parts of India, because always we are always uh, you know we have problems of buns or strike. Therefore, uh, we felt that Mandalay would be the right choice to have some uh, you know steady uh, supply of essential items. Then we explore really road uh, in uh, Mandalay really road that is in China. We also explore Mandalay uh, Mandalay to uh, Mysore. Uh, two, three times we have traveled, and uh, I would say road condition is good. And in fact, uh, we are talking about pilgrimages, particularly Buddhist pilgrimages. I think Manipur would be one of the uh, way, particularly for those who are in the uh, you know uh, poorer economic category, because this this would possibly provide an alternative. Because the travel uh, distance, as you know, is 1,360 kilometers from Mysore to. Uh, uh, Tamu, More, uh, so it can be covered in about, uh, yeah, 20 hours, 20 hours, and the road condition, I would say, is not as good as Thailand, because I have traveled various parts of Thailand, road conditions are not that good, but still, it is much better than what uh, the road condition in many parts of Nordis. Uh, and what um, Manipur can offer, for example, we have four PhD students from Thailand, and two are about to complete. Uh, then, as you probably are aware, the border crossing are open between uh, uh, Myanmar and uh, India at two points, at Mizoram and uh, uh, Manipur. And uh, as far as the record I gathered, uh, around 250 persons have crossed from Myanmar to Manipur in the past uh, six, seven months. And out of that, 175 are Myanmaris, and 27 are from Thailand. So this is a good number. I mean, and uh, if we have all these uh, economic exchanges, I'm sorry, educational exchanges and pilgrimages, possibly this could be a very good uh, way to have a people-to-people -people connectivity. Then, um, yeah, of course, uh, speaking from uh, Thailand, I think this may not be very relevant, but. Manipur also offer very affordable or comparatively cheaper medical treatment. It may not be as sophisticated as Thailand, Bangkok, or as sophisticated as Guwahati is, but you know, we can provide, Manipur provides. In fact, we have more than 400, uh, usually around 400 people from Myanmar comes for treatment to Manipur. So these are one area I think uh, we can also look at. And uh, yes, what are the problems in this Indo-Myanmar Indo trilateral highway. As I have mentioned, we have a steady flow of uh, tourists or whatever from through Myanmar. But the problem is they always complain about the harassment at the hands of the law enforcing agency. Because there are two, three checkpoints from uh, Tamu to Impal. And they always complain about harassment by the law enforcing agency. Sometimes you have to... Um, uh, they do body search and all. So I think this can be removed, and if this is removed, this is the complaint, I mean, it is officially recorded uh, very recently, and this, if uh, government of India uh, uh, pay a little attention, I think this harassment can be removed, and that possibly can build what you call stronger people-to-people -people connectivity. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the
travel through this uh, steel well route thrice, from Kunming to this part of Burma. But from Margarita, from Lido, from that Patkai range, we are not allowed to go in, the, in between that uh, Myanmar area, that Tanghai Basti. This is not roadable. So I have personally visited thrice. Yeah, <laughs> that's why. Yeah, you are right that we must also think of that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now I call uh, Somai Chimak from Mekong Regional Studies Program, uh, Uban Ratsa Ratsanami University to give his presentation. Yeah. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and my dearest professor, Professor Chatip Nasipa. I'm from the, the northeast of Thailand, the most northeast of Thailand, Ubon Rajani University, close to Lao and, and, and Cambodia. And last month, I had no idea about the North, Northeast India. But I got the, the, the letter to, invited letter to, to, to join this, this uh, seminar uh, by uh, Professor uh, Sankita. She arranged it. Because uh, last two months, we met each other at the Samaria, Cambodia. <laughs> OK, my topic is. Uh, about the Northeast India study in Thailand, a primary study, because I'm anthropologist. So I never been to Northeast India. But I have to come here. So <laughs> how, how, I have to, I, I, yes, I away and, and tried it. But uh, in, uh, on, uh, to, uh, year 2000, I have the, the research about the India study in Thailand, development and status. This is my research. I got the scholars, uh, the, the, the grants from the India study, Namasa University. And my advisor is Dr. Karuna and Dr. Ruang Urai Kuslasai. Yes. So, I call this my article, the nine day article. I have only nine days. Yes, to collect the document about the Northeast India, which I never been there. So next time, invite me to Northeast, okay? Northeast <laughs> India. <laughs> the, right, the, the right director, yes. Yeah, 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 okay. So I quite work hard, <laughs> but I would like to dedicate this work to my dearest professors, yes, Dr. Chatip Nasipa, and my former advisor, Dr. Karuna and Dr. Regulai. So, okay. My comments is about the interaction, objectives, result of study, conclusion, and suggestion. <clears throat> okay, I think the Northeast India study in Thailand is related to the, the, the context of the, the, so, uh, the region society, uh, uh, society and culture. Because uh, we heard about the Indian Look East policy in 1991. And okay, further in uh, 2014 is uh, uh, changed to the India's Act East policy. And this policy make the Northeastern region or, or Northeast India as the gate to ASEAN. That's why the, the speaker uh, tried to show that, okay, we have links together. So the importance of the Northeast India uh, study for Thailand. So, because I'm a major, okay, not a major, pre a major. Dr. Jirapat said that he is a major. I'm pre a major. 
because I have no idea. I never been to India before. Okay, <laughs> okay. So I, I just only to investigate the status of the Northeast India study in Thailand by survey documentary research, by documentary research. Okay, this is all the study. What is found? I found that the Northeast India study in Thailand. I call as the secondary stream India study question mark. under the India study chair <laughs> under the India study umbrella. So Thai people news India than more than Northeast India, like me, right? But I mean, I think from now the the Thai people will know a lot about Northeast India. India study in Thailand starts in King Rama's five periods. That means nearly more than 100 years ago. But for the Northeast Indian study in Thailand, if we, we start uh, with the Professor Dr. Banjob Panumita, it's just only 60 years ago. Is it young? It's really young. Okay. Uh, the Northeast India study in Thailand start with the informal to the formal. Because like the, uh, the, the slide of the, the meet with my professor Chachip to about the, uh, the Sang Patan, uh, Professor Sang Patanothai or Saranath. He write the book about the, the uh, Thai Ahom because in Thai, Yem Thai Ahom, Sai Lek Ngo Rao, it means visit Thai Ahom, our blood. In 1954, long time ago, that is the, I think this is the first book about the, the, the Northeast uh, India. I try to divide the, 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 the academic works uh, about the Northeast India into three, three waves. I call the web. The first web is uh, uh, since doc Dr. Banjob Panumeta, some slide I, I, I like the, my professor Chatip Chat show you that before. Uh, <coughs> Dr. Banjob, I think she is uh, the first formal of the Northeast Indian study in Thailand. Uh, she was, uh, some people call her that Thai language detective and Thailand's first female anthropologi anthropologist. Yeah. He wrote a book about uh, uh, the Thai home, Kale Ban Thai, Pai Thiel Ban Thai, or which is a Thai village in 1961. This book, this book was highly useful to Thai academic society until nowadays. The thing web, I think my professor, my dearest professor, is the, the thing web, the, the second web of the, 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 the Northeast Indian study. He awake, or make the, the, the awake creature of the Northeast India in Thailand. His research about the history of Thai society and culture, which have the 12 books from the research and two books about our home, is the, I think this is the, 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 the important data document for the, the, the people who want to, to know about the, 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 the Northeast uh, India's uh, region. And the third web is uh, after the uh, Professor Chatip and, and his colleagues conduct the research, I found that there are some <coughs> scholars, Thai scholars, who work with uh, 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 the, the Northeast uh, India, such as the prof uh, as Professor Dr. Mujong here. He got PhD in anthropology from, from India, and he has the and there's, and there's a five book about the time in Northeast India. And you need to. Okay. 
<laughs> I'm fine when you call come walking. Okay, the train of not East India uh, in Thailand for the weakness. I think still lack of the the new academic world still, and the government policies. I think the Thai government's not support about the area study. Yeah. And geography and language problem. Okay, by far more than one thousand kilometers. But if the government support, no problem. But opportunity, the economic expansion and integration in the region, South India and the North East India, I think this is, this is the, the opportunity for the, the academic level too. And Thailand and India policy. Okay, now they will be found. Like, like this, uh, this uh, seminar or this event too. That means uh, the India and Thai close to, to uh, together, and maybe we we will extend from the economic to the another uh, dimension like culture and economic. Okay, the last slide. Not is in the, in Thailand. <laughs> That's in uh, six years, uh, sixty years ago by Charles writing. The interest means theme about not East India or the Thai academic was the share cultural of Thai by survey research. And they extended issue for study among the young academic generation. Suggestion. I think if the the right of the not East Indian study in Thai, Thailand will happen if the supporting from the government both Thailand and India both central and local government. I'm happy to, to, to have that the, the local government of Assam support this too. Set up the research program, then research project. Okay, like the, the <coughs> Professor Chantip uh, did before. We include the various field academic work together. Produce uh, local and English language ac academics works. Extend the research issue and area of the study covered all the Northeast India. I have, today I just know that in the Northeast India, they have 220 ethnic group. So we heard only two or three group in that area, at home, county, something like that. So they have a lot of work. Annual academic conference seminar like this. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Somai. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, now, I, now I call Dr. Surat Hirachaukul, Indian Studies Center of Solalongkar University, just to give some information, yeah. Although you are not giving any PPTs. Although I will take five minutes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> One below. Miss <laughs> Suchitra Durai, Ambassador of India to Thailand. Uh, Professor Mitu Hazarika, Vice Chancellor of Guwahati University. Thank you very much for inviting me here today. I will not talk about northeast of India very much, but I would rather focus on people to people exchange. And because I, I am not an expert on northeast of India, the expert spoke the first, which is Professor Shatip Natupa. And I first understand about northeast of India through his book when I was young at that time. I went to India for the first time in 1982 to study there. And in the visa at that time, it was stamped that we were not allowed to go to certain part of northeast of India. The general consulate is sitting here. And in fact, at that time, when we obtained the visa, the embassy of uh, consulate in Chiang Mai was not the one that you are here. This is the new one. The old one was in a very British colonial area at that time in Chiang Mai. So today, if you compare Northeast India in the past, it's getting better. Things are getting better. Much more relaxing atmosphere. 
and I think it's uh, very conducive to people to people exchange. Unfortunately, there's no flight, direct flight from Bangkok to Guwahati. And when we talk about people to people exchange, I think this is something very important. No? And you used to have a uh, Druk Airs before. So before I went to Timpu, we used to stop there before. So I'm ho I hope Ambassador Durai is here. She will work for us very hard that we have direct flight. Already happening, happening already? Next month. Next month. Oh. Okay. <laughs> this, this would be which airways? Spice Jet. Spice Jet. Okay, that's good news because it's a nightmare that you have to travel to Kolkata and then wait for another flight to go there. So I will be the first lot of group to travel there with Spice Jet. Okay, that's a very good news. Now, and people to people uh, relations. Uh, we most of us come from university, and we definitely want to make sure that we have exchange of professors, exchange of students, and so on. But things are not easy. And I will challenge you also that when we talk about people-to-people -people relations among us in universities, we have to think of the funding as well. Where would the funding come from? Okay, why? Because when we first sign uh, we were asked to sign MOU with Shillong University, and we did it on 10th of January, which of course Madame Ambassador was there. We were also working with the Thailand Research Fund and Professor Tirapan Leung Tong Kam worked very hard to get the fund there. Quite a huge amount of money involving about 50 people, so 25 from both sides. This project will run for at least three years. The MOU is there for five years. So the next question is, what happened after the project is finished? So that's why we had a meeting that we don't only want to sign MOU, we want MOU to be implemented as well. And we have delegated two scholars now to Shillong University to understand the strength of Shillong University and at the same time, Shillong University have sent someone to understand the strength of Chulalongkorn University so that at least we have Indian students studying with us for a short period of time and we have Thai students studying there for a short period of time. We are working also on a credit transfer system where students do not have to pay so much. But of course, they still have to pay for the flight. And now they don't have to stop in Kolkata anymore. They will go there directly. So this is something good news for them. But I'm sure that Ambassador Durai will help us more on the student visa basis and grants and others when it's come to this exchange program. So the courses that we plan to establish okay, will be more on tourism, hospitalities, and other kinds of that we are good at so that Indian students from Shillong can come and study with us. At the same time, we also see the strengths in Shillong University, for example. We also <laughs> want to send our students for that kind of course. So this is mutual interest, and it basically incentivizes them to go. It provides them incentives to move forward that way. Tourism. Tourism is something very important. And you will find that the number of Thai tourists visiting India has increased. The number of Indian tourists visiting Thailand has increased significantly. In fact, Deputy Prime Minister Songkit Chatusi Pitak was saying that because number of tourists from other countries have declined, okay, basically now the target is India. <laughs> so that we bring more Indian tourists to our countries and so on. Now, Thai people go to India mostly for Buddhist pilgrimage. Few youngsters like to go to Ladakh and other places and so on. And when we got the video clip from northeast of India and we showed it to our friends in Thailand, they were surprised that these places exist in India. 
So I believe the incredible India poster here, they have to do more jobs to expand the horizon of India. That, of course, I have been to Buddhist pilgrimage before, but I would like to discover India more than Buddhist pilgrimage, and India offers that. So how do we see that as well? I hope northeast of India can comes more in the incredible India projects. At the same time, our Thai Tourism Authority, which I have criticized them also in a very harsh manner, because sometimes you produce video clip suitable for European tourists. And when you show these clips to Indian tourists, they don't like it very much. I asked my Indian friends, what do you think of this? I said, no, we went to Thailand and we were impressed with so many things, but these things were not in the clips. <laughs> See, maybe we have to work more to expand that. The number of tourists visiting uh, from India visiting Thailand has increased, but unquestionably we can do it more because tourism, tourism can bring better understanding about both countries. How do we do that? That's something very important. So last but not least, I see my friends here, of course, who has been so active in doing so many things on film festivals and so on. And of course, films from northeast of India, or other parts of cultures, can actually come to Thai television also. Believe it or not, <laughs> many Thai uh, people, especially more than 40 and above, uh, heavily engage in the evening time in watching Ganesha, Kalima, Shiva series, and other kind of series. They love it so much. <laughs> okay. This is your strength of your soft power. And perhaps if we can add more things like this for Thai people to explore. So thank you very much. Long live India-Thailand relations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, it's no doubt very important for the institute to institute connectivity and it requires fun. But I would like to mention that we are providing many incentives to the students going to Guwahati University from Southeast Asia and partly by the government of Assam as well. We are providing in terms of subsidized fee, free ship, and scholarships, and many other incentives are being provided. Once we start moving only more and more scholarships or more, more support funding is expected. It is a question of flow of people, exchange of people, interest shown. I'm sure that more and more interest is shown by South East Asian students and the government of India will also come forward to provide assistance. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, we, now I call uh, Paimti Guhai for his presentation on Thai Fake. Mr. Paimti Gohai is a Taifake scholar. In fact, he is instrumental in bringing the royal family to Upper Assam, whereby uh, they had visited the tourist Buddhist circuit in Upper Assam. Swadi Kha Kupaini Ovati Pome Seng Meng Teng Lai Anma Ho Matum Dina Sapang Mai. Nang Mun Tuxeg Embassy Kopting Scholar Kun Mung Pinong Thai Kun Mung Pinong India Kopting Look on Son Lake and you 
ที่เมืองไทยลูกเสเมืองอาซัมอินเดียอังดึงหลงอยู่แวกันปาเก้าคบไปเอเขาจือว่าเป็นที่ลูกเชเป็นคนไต่ผาเกลูกเชอันยูที่เมืองอินเดียพันไตอย่างหกพันหนึ่งว่าไตยาหมสองไตคัมตีสามนัดไตพาเกซีไตไอตอนฮาไตคำยังฮกไตตุรุงวอลกอมอลไอเฮปมายเพรสเซนต์บัตไอวันต์ทูโซบิฟอร์ยู Throw some images, uh, so I think by the images, by the photography, you must better to know, must better to feel what is the similarity about type of Northeast India and uh, Southeast Asia, the relation, what is the possibility, what is the atmosphere uh, still uh, in. The boat uh, region. In Pixar, that is a Thai Phake girl in traditional attire. I hope similar dresses, similar uh, attire we should found in the uh, northern Thailand also, in Myanmar also, in the southern China also. So Thai p h a k e during the sort of time, I just uh, read on some, some few, few line only in the introductory part and in finding also. Thai p h a k e migrated to uh, Assam in the 1775 AD from the Ho Kong Valley, the northern Myanmar to the uh, northeast India. That is the first picture, and uh, the second picture, the Thai pe people migrated the route on one, two, two, and three. After that, the in four. Now where Thai p h a k e is uh, settled there. This is the Thai p h a k e alphabet: ka, ha, nga, cha, sa, nya, ta. ทานาปะพามายาลาวะฮะอะ Later uh, images uh, we uh, saw the, the similarities with the Sanskrit and other also. So we all know that the Thai uh, language, the tonal language, for example, the first alphabet K. Without any uh, symbol, we uh, pronounce different difference uh, and the different difference meanings come out from that. Ka, it is the alphabet we pronounce. Ka, and ka means go. Kau ka, I go. Mer ka, you go. Ka means dance. Kau ka, I dance. You you dance. Mer ka. And ka is mean business. Kau ka ka. I go to uh, go to uh, form uh, business like that. To so six tones, sometimes uh, sometimes seven tones, eight tones also we have. This is the some difference uh, language in upper, which Thai people use still. Thai k a m t i also use that, and the Thai i t o n also use that language. Then in the uh, Sanskrit, the second one in the 
uh, sun state also, the third one, and the last one is now used in the Thailand by uh, Thai people. So I think uh, in the previous uh, year, uh, the language safe is almost similar, but during the they uh, settled down in the different different area, different different uh, region. Some the safe will be changed. This some manuscript preserved very much unscientifically in uh, Thai Phake monastery and in the home also. It is the Songkran festival observed in Thai Phake villages. But we call Sangken, here called Songkran. The images of Songkran in Taifaki villages called Sanken. Images of Sanken. Images of Sanken in the night time. Also, images of Sanken. We have seen in the full moon day and the new moon in the monastery, villagers gathered in monastery for uh, Thomtra. We have seen in the Buddha Purnima also, that's kind of images. It is the another festival observed in the during September or October called Poi Okwa. This is also the night images of Poyokwa. It's another festival, Maiko Sompai, the night images, the Maiko Sompai. Images of Maiko Sompai. This is images during the boys when uh, going to the monkhood called Sang Along. Before they go to mong monkhood, this festival is observed. Poi Kham Sang. It's another festival, Poi Pi Mal, because uh, we all Thai follow the same almanac called Nen Ching, Nen Kam, Nen Sam, Nen Si, Nen Ha, Nen Ho, Nen Chet, Nen Pet, Nen Kao, Nen Sip, Nen Sip Eight, Nen Sip Song. So, uh, as as uh, that uh, all the Thai people of, uh, from uh, over the world observe the same Poi Pi Mal in the same days. This is uh, images from uh, Thai Phakes people observe Poi Pi Mal. Now I call uh, Dr. Damrong Phan Insan from uh, Silpakon University to give his presentation. Thai social cultural identity of Southeast Asia and Northeast India. Many scholars already talk about the Thai people. You know? uh, for the Thai people uh, now, uh, I think it's for the population around the world. And it's most, uh, more than 80 million people, Thai speaking group from the North East India to, to the Southern China also to the Hainan, Iceland. From the, that have the many the wrong history and theory of the Thai people uh, and, uh, and many aspects, uh, linguistic sphere, others uh, aspect. Then uh, for that no, distribution of Thai people from the 
Assam or others from Northeast India to to Hainan, Iceland. This is the land of the Thai people and Thai Kadai people. That means Poto Thai, all right, that from linguistic. From that, the distribution is many more than uh, like that. If we calculate through the dialect, no, more than 100 dialect of the Thai people from the southern part of China to to uh, Thailand and others state of India. Like that. Uh, I will say about the Thai social cultural identity from the many aspect. Uh, many scholar already uh, talk about the some aspect. Then I will go to past. No, uh, for the language, no, many Thai people. Also, it's in Northeast India, the six Thai group belonging to the Southwestern Thai uh, from the linguist scholar from the uh, Chinese, uh, US Chinese, no, Fangguili, like that. And that's Min Thai, Lao Shan, Black Thai, Red Thai, White Thai, and Ahom, and others Thai group in Southeast Asia and others are in Northeast India, the same, of the same branch of this. Uh, Thai people in Southeast Asia and China is some similarity by the custom of the uh, lady or the women. Then uh, most of them decorate by dress up. You know. From this is from the Southern China. Uh, I was uh, traveled uh, for the from my P, um, MA to PhD uh, from the 1999 to now. Then uh, I have concluded this Thai people in Northeast India some similarity and have some the identity is same. Now we have uh, know about the five group, but uh, we maybe ignore for the Thai Lai in Manipur. It's a, it's a new hours uh, research from the, some scholar from Northeast India. And uh, that this mean uh, many scholars say about the Buddhist way of the Thai people and also for the language for the others. Uh, for that, it's uh, not only that. For the history, you no know, many theory. I will I will skip for the theory, you no, know, because the migration is many is a theory for the Thai people. Just as Professor Nasupa also talk about this one, you no know, manuscript Thai manuscript from the Ahom Buranji or others chronicle, and our uh, hero and some persons talk about the Chao Rong Sugafa others. We have to talk about the Rashid Babukan or Lachet in Thai language and this. Uh, cultural uh, political hero no, of the Indian also, not only the North East India. Then uh, now we well known in India no, about the that no. uh, history of uh, Assam also it's we know about that from the the from the, the colonial era. And uh certain of the Thai community certain on I mean, in the valleys, or the river, and the hill. Uh, from that is from the southern China, have the bridge, uh, sand and wind and sand bridge, and others sitting in the right, in the right cultivation. You know, the people sitting in the river valley and a long time ago until now. And uh, the main of the rivers have the wet rice cultivation. The rice is important. Uh, the professor, uh, Dr. Kanopon already said about that one. No? For the Brahma Buddha River also, this is a big river in Asia. It's a rice spread from the Himalaya, from Anunajan to Bangkara. Yeah. And for the Lelihus, uh, for the domestic use, labor, saving, device, fishing, hunting, collecting, forest, product, and animal domestication and planting is same. No? But uh, maybe you can see uh, from the Thailand uh, have the consumption and trade more. But uh, now we have to revise and we have to like the uh, nostalgia about the Thai people when we uh, travel to the Thai community in Assam in other state of uh, Northeast India because it's the, we we feel it's like the family uh, of the same family of the same of language like that. And uh, for the really uh, who's that agricultural technology waste like cultivation from the uh, handmade or something like that and uh, from that uh, uh, from the past the Thai are home kingdom in northeast India the scholar said the Mong Nun Sun come this mean the land of the gold can make the muka seal and others right and that uh, can make product is uh, the famous in the world like this and food and drink is same uh, spirit or the alcohol or rau or look lao in uh, our home language or like and some is language you know, same uh, for the art uh, architecture weaving and textile is a bamboo traditional how and material culture and also the rich and colorful motif and design bloom and serial culture 
from that traditional Hounder to story and the longhouse or like that a little bit change from the uh, from that cultural domi dominance from the others like the China, Vietnamese and others. And also in uh, Thailand also we develop to the Western. Mm. Uh, for the home archaeological site, uh, some person said already that some symbol and some like that uh, or others uh, building uh, similar to the Thai traditional house as same as uh, in Kamakaya Temple and also in Langa, also in Moidam, have the same ancestor worship there. Uh, Thai weaving textile from the Chuang people to the Thai some in the Red River in the southern uh, China to the Vietnam and in uh, Southeast Asia is that uh, the women represent the good uh, and means uh, it means uh, attractive for the take photo and for the uh, talk about the uh, textile or motif like that. Then uh, many ties uh, this from the Johat, uh, no, is uh, in Assam state. Also, the some uh, character or some alphabets or some uh, textile is just have similarity that that's uh, some scholar said already. For religion and beliefs and custom, they have the some. Uh, for the important of ancient Thai tradition before the Buddhist, no, we follow uh, the animist or the ancestor worship Quan and P. This means spirit, cholesterol, being of the supernatural power and ceremony and practice ancestor worship. Like the, some person said, Madame May P. Shokrong for the marriage license, marriage college ceremony, sorry, and uh, others. No. And for some Thai people in others, uh, uh, not only at home, no, in, in Aiton and Durung in Kabiang Rong. Uh, uh, in Assam, also they have to follow the Buddhist. Uh, also, Kham Yang in Margarita, Din Sugiya district, uh, followed in Buddhist way. And Kham Yang in uh, Siam Gaon, Tita Bo, Johat, also they have the Buddhist temple. Um, and Kham Ti also perform both of the Buddhist way and uh, some the uh, ancestor or some uh, before the Buddhist coming. No? Like that in this, uh, uh, she performed Kin uh, Kamai or the, for the new rice uh, after that, they offer some rice, a new rice to the Buddha, Rod Buddha, and others uh, for the spirits outside the, her home. Uh, and in uh, Jorhat, have the many Thai uh, and mean Buddhist temple, also some uh, present by the Thai uh, people from Bangkok. Uh, Others uh, for the tradition is a Bihu traditional dance. You can see after the this seminar to the that uh, to the concert. For others, uh, some people mix with other Turung with Mijingpo or something like that. For the social politics system, they have the kinship clan, Mueang Ban concept, and living in con other country, not only the Thailand, no, Lao and others, but uh, try to autonomize some. As as same, you know, for the Ahom or chance in Myanmar, uh, like the social political movement in Northeast India, uh, I will skip at this topic, okay? And uh, for the data, we want to revise and have to conservation manuscript and have to uh, demand for the death status for the social status from India. That means have to consider. I just came back from the. Uh, International conference from Jorhat Kedin Yam Havit Airline. And is this uh, about the act is policy is a half the function for the people. That's been have the connection, have the cross connection. Like the, from the past year, uh, have the, some motto, no? uh, painting on the wall also, and have some book uh, home, go back to Thailand. This is for that, the right, have the some relationship between our home. Also, the Princess Mahajaki Spring Town. Also, which is uh, not East India sometime like that. Okay, thank you for my presentation. Professor Damarong Fon for your presentation. This is what I was about to speak. My presentation was uh, to some extent similar to him. So he has done it. <laughs> so no need to, for me to present anymore, uh, only a few. Uh, so I now request uh, Chakri Bodhimani to give his presentation. Please make it short. Okay, please come. Good evening. I am a researcher at the Princess Mahajaki Silinton Anthropology Center, the Ministry of Culture, Government of Thailand. Uh, I, I, I feel privileged to be invited to be here and uh, 
turned out that I'm quite a junior researcher, junior scholar, whatever we, we would call. Uh, I, like quite a few years, I received uh, this uh, ICCR scholarship from Indian government. I was able to educate it in Assam at Tespu University. Uh, I have seen some uh, Pomabuta River pictures that remind me, I used to swim in Pomabuta River. Then, however, I have done my dissertation and uh, further research on the Nagas of Nagaland, uh, as well, people over there may uh, think that I look like uh, Akasi, Akasi, or Gasi in Mekalaya. I'm not sure why. Not many people uh, greeted me that I look like Ahum or anything. Maybe my province shared the border with the Cambodia or something. So let me begin. I think uh, due to the short of time, I, we have to put this presentation another way around. Uh, <clears throat> in this pretend presentation, I use the uh, visual approach to, to look at the culture, cultural representation of Dinaka. Uh, I will just go briefly. I would like to begin with the, uh, the beauty J. Mitchell's notion on the fabrication of images that uh, caught him. Uh, our current historical moment is experiencing a picture turn a reorientation around visual media. And this, in this case, it's very interesting that uh, the visual elements have become a common feature of our everyday life that it hardly deserves any close scrutiny, to be honest. And uh, the dietary of images has ensured that we come to see the visual elements in the text. The text, this means anything the cat is meaning, uh, as a natural and commonplace. All right, uh, the problematic interface in the arena of visual culture points to a certain way of looking at things. So when, when we are not aware of the visual familiarity, this is the start of the crisis of representation. Uh, the meaning-making uh, meaning process of the tribal in Nakal uh, and or even in Northeast India in general might start from uh, even pre-the colonialism. Uh, but uh, the notion of the tribal definitely ranges from uh, the archive of uh, anthropologists who, you know, the North India is the, like, the heaven of ethnologists and anthropologists. In the picture is the, uh, his name is Christoph von Hermandorf. Uh, most of his work belongs to the uh, SOAS in UK. And uh, in this picture, very strange that we could see that among the, uh, among the Nagas, only the white man in the, uh, in, in, in the most left can make the Nagas seem like the others. In this case, I mean the, the technological development of the free and family like capturing anything that more, the, this set of knowledge is more close to the Western knowledge and the idea. Uh, uh, I, I will skip to this, the, the, the next topic, cultural product media and the act of living up to image. This is what happened in 2014. Uh, recent, recent year, last recent years, we've seen that the prominent uh, personnel, even uh, the president and the prime minister has come to the uh, to Nakaland in the day of Hanbu Festival, the, uh, the first day to open the, the, the festival of festivals is also the day that uh, the, 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 the unless situation officially got over, just in the name. Uh, and this picture can show the ideas of unity in diversity of India. Uh, and this picture captured by, I'm, I'm going to say here why I'm using the feminine body words, because uh, after independent and uh, followed by the creation of Nagaland state, uh, the way of representing the culture of Naga and as well as the contestation of identities of the Nagaland moved toward from the, the strength of men, male body, the militarization, and as part of that, the unless political situation moved to the the some sort of uh, feminine body, which might put as the material 
materialized. Yeah, the family has been materialized. Uh, this one uh, captured by Erwin, if you're familiar with the name, and the capture that I quoted at the, the old world. But this picture was taken in 1947, the year that, that, that India has prepared for independence. And it's that kind of people as the old world in 1947, when the <laughs> uh, the, uh, when, when India was going to decry the colonialism. Uh, this one as well, and uh, um, skip to this one. Uh, this is uh, called Tetsu Sister. If some people are from Nakaland or that part of the country, the India, they will, will feel familiar with these people. Uh, this quartet singer performed the folk uh, traditional song and not only popular in Nagaland or other Northeast media, thanks to the media, regional media mechanism. They also went to Canada, they went to Myanmar, the Nagas people in Myanmar to perform and advocate uh, the, the ethnic element of uh, Nagaland. Previously mentioned, I would like to say that uh, before the creation of the state of Nagaland, there are also other Naka people who live in uh, other parts of uh, Northeast India, including Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur. We have a large number of Naka Manipur also in Assam. Uh, recently, we uh, I try to keep on uh, after coming back from India, I try to keep on uh, observing the the the, the spread, the circ circulation of uh, media, new media, or I would say media ecology of Northeast India that spread uh, outside the region. Uh, this picture I quoted from the. Instagram. Uh, Mengu So Kri, she is the well known singer in Nakalan. Yeah. And uh, at this picture, she went to the Glasgow, UK to represent uh, Naka women, uh, if I put it simply, <laughs> quite simply. And uh, also, this is uh, anyone familiar with her? She is the assistant professor from Kohima College, affiliated to Nakala University. Uh, she has uh, quite a few, a lot actually, followers on Instagram. Uh, the, 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 uh, this uh, lady uh, tried to, you know, put a lot of activity in preserving uh, Naka textiles, but keep it current and relevant. Uh, I, 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 I would just stop here, but I would uh, suggest you to at least looking at the change and the perception of uh, contestation of identity for the Nagas people. I would like to say for the last part that uh, uh, currently I'm working on uh, the Kalen community in Thailand in the border area of Mesota province where the AH1 highway, actually number one highway crossed past and also I keep on the track that uh, there are quite a uh, tiny body of Christian missionary from Nakaland that have been working among the Kalin community in Thailand. If uh, anyone would like uh, to share this idea or develop the research project, I would be most welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dibani, uh, for your presentation and Naga because it is a very widely distributed tribe. We have Naga right from India to Myanmar. So thank you for your presentation. And uh, now I call upon the last presenter, Kanak Kwan Jayadat, Faculty of Archaeology of Silica Park on University. Hey, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And I would like to uh, be my teacher from Silica Park on University. Professor Jirapat Papandavidya, Ajahn Uten, Ajahn Sompat, and also Ajahn Nongla, and uh, all the audience. Uh, today, I would like to present my paper about my, it's related to my research work, but uh, this is not my research finding. This is just only uh, some notes from the field. And also, I have to give a special thanks for uh, Indian Embassy that I, um, I got the ICCR scholarship, and then uh, they gave this uh, for my research work. And also, I would like to dedicate to uh, Professor Chatip because of him uh, introduced me to the field to the uh, at home academician, and also he gave me a suggestion. Then I could do this um, research, 
and also Ajale Novisha Singh and Jao Tile Swamohan, who are the person who teach the Ahom language. The significance of this study, I mean for this paper, uh, as everybody knows, the study of a home manuscript is one of the most important research area in the Thai study. It might be because of many scholars believe that these manuscripts are the container of the essence of Thai culture, especially in the case of the spirit calling text or Rea uh, Kwan, uh, we call Kampi Rea Kwan in Thai. However, uh, many scholars uh, did the research work about the uh, manuscript before, like Ajahn Lenu Vishasin, he, she is the translation and translation about the Ahom Bulanji, but any other <coughs> manuscript uh, haven't been uh, researched or haven't been studied. A lot of them, uh, like the Kampi Rekwan or uh, the spirit calling text that I am doing. So uh, I, I just uh, go to the field and try to find out where can I get the manuscript and where can I get them to uh, research. So uh, for my uh, this presentation, I would like to uh, propose that the study of the spirit calling text or the Ahom manuscript would never be complete without the study of Ahom priest and the uses of the script in the ritual. So my presentation outline is built, uh, divided into two parts. The first part will explain the few research method that I'm using. And the second part will discuss through Feels my field's experience, and I will give the two arguments why field work is extremely necessary for the studying of the Ahom manuscript, especially the spirit calling text. For the field method, as everybody know, like first you need to uh, preparation for the field trip, but the most important is that you need to contact with the Ahom expert or Ahom academician in the uh, local uh, in 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 the field, like uh, many many places I visit, like in Dibuka, I have to contact with the professor Jinin Bukon, and he also uh, suggests me to go to the Palijar village. And also, if I'm going to Temanji, I need to contact with Professor uh, Doctor Puspa Gogoi, so that the connection or the connection between the at home uh, expert or scholar and and uh, myself is very much important. And without the help of uh, Professor Shatip to introduce me to all that uh, academician, I would have been to uh, reach the village. And also then after that, it will be like step by step. First you need to contact the, the at home scholar and then they will just suggest you to go to the field and then you just doing your, your job. And also another important uh, thing is that you need to learning the language of the local language like Assamese because you need to a little bit talk to them when you uh, interview. Otherwise the, the smooth of the interview is not there. So I'm meeting with the academician and expert like this and then they suggest me to the field and and I also went to the uh, institute that the manuscript are kept at the present like uh, Institute of Thai uh, of Dr. Jilin Di Thas, Assam State uh, Museum, uh, Thai, uh, Thai Museum. And then after that, I'm going to the field. My field work uh, conduct at Palijat Village of Sipsaka District. So, go to the, the two arguments from the field. The firstly, I think the travel experience from the field give a clear concrete understanding of the places and the people elaborated on the script for. Like, uh, for example, I went to um, the village of Borgohai uh, village, like in Madurai. 
So I, I, I read the manuscript and I know that they have the different, different uh, uh, family clan from the different, um, different uh, the position in the Ahom administration. Like Borko Hai, they are the Ahom um, chief like that. So they will live together in, in the village in Madurai, uh, Madurai and like for the priest that I went to uh, doing my research work, they live in the Parijat of them. They are the three priestly clan in the Parijat like Mosha Molong Mopong, so or Deo Thai Bai Lung Pugan. So uh, traveling to see of them then make me understand more when I'm reading the manuscript. The, the second argument is like, the priests know the script truly, and very interestingly, there is other knowledge about the spirit or the quan that has not been written in the, in the manuscript, but, but passed on only among the priests. Um, it's like I meet or order the, this. He is, all of them is priest, or we call more, more long. Um, the left hand side, uh, the second one is his, like my teacher, his name is Tileswa Mohan. So he is now like the, um, the best of more about the Ahom priests, among the Ahom priests. And the second one in the middle is Chao Chunalam Shang Bun Pukan, but is, uh, is, he is no more, <laughs> he's passed away. And also uh, the, Third one is another more, I could not remember <laughs> his name, and uh, the below in the middle, he is uh, in Temaji, in Bogobi uh, village. So, uh, I, so I'm just uh, doing the traditional issue to asking for learning the Ahom language after the first time I uh, interviewed him, and he showed me his skill to read the Ahom manuscript, and also he know uh, what is the meaning? And uh, after I compare with the Thai language in Thailand, so he know a lot. That is why, and also he know the script and he know the development of the script and he also have the script more than 50 manuscript. Not only him, uh, any other uh, priest also they have. So uh, I want to learn from him, but I need to do respect as the people in the village or any other when uh, want to ask him to do something, then we have to uh, offering him. So I offering uh, him the tamun pan or the makmu, and especially three pieces because uh, I need to pay homage for the three more, molong, mosam, and mopong. So I need to give for the trees and also some money, a little like ten rupees or something like that, and also uh, the gamusa that is to pay respect. And he. He teach me, uh, I stay in that village, and every morning he asked me to come at 8 a.m. and learning uh, from him if he have work. So I can learn only one or two hours, but if he, he don't have any work, so I learn for up to the 12 at noon. It's like that. So this is the, for example, uh, conning uh, the, the script from the collection of Tireswa Bailung Pugan. And this is from Taz, I took this picture myself, and this is about Bulanji. And um, I, I'm, I'm not saying it was my luck, because I went to uh, talk to Junalam Sangbun Pukan, and I video, and I take a video of him, and uh, some interview, and then after that, it's come to my, like, I'm so sad that he passed away. At, at least uh, I talk a lot with him. This is this. And this one is also at the Tireswa Mohan's uh, house. He's uh, also met with Ajalinu before. And this is Jibes Swa Molung that I in, uh, interview him. Uh, normally he was a farm, he was a person and he also uh, doing some work like a mall. And this is the observing the traditional a home ritual. And so the conclusion is that uh, the most initial and crucial step for those who aim to study the uh, Ahom manuscript, like the spirit calling text, like in, in my case, so you should go to the field. 
So thank you. And one more, one more thing. Just, just. ตุกสามตุสุรุบันตัดตัดบันเนี่ยเนี่ยบ่เซ็งดําละอาคาบาคาบิดปราจิตุรุเล่งคําสลิกสนคําจ้าเป็นสิ่งสุสีมุงดาย
line, so they do sac sacrifice. Blood sacrifice is very essential, mostly the uh, chicken, and even dog. Here. Uh, these are some of the festivals, rituals in Thailand, which you also have in Assam. Water, God. Here also we do Ahom priest. Here in Assamese we call Lokhimi Adora, our harvesting season. So I just, uh, these are the uh, Ahom system of divination. Similar, <laughs> that is okay. This is a uh, bit not chewing. Yeah. So I just want to come to the conclusion. Here, although the people of the, these two die groups, they have never seen each other, and for some reason they are living in different uh, areas or in countries, but they have the similar um, ethnocultural similarities. And the recent discussion on reopening of Steelwell Road will also be gratefully benefited by exploring the inter cultural links between these regions. Uh, and Steelwell Road is in particular, is the shortest land route connecting India with Myanmar, China, and other neighboring countries, including uh, Thailand. Such potentiality would exert influence in the mind of policymakers, both the countries whose land uh, for activists and also lucrative policies of Thailand. Uh, this Assam and Seven Sister States today is seen with re renewed interest and relationship, massive plans to connect ASEAN countries with Northeast India through Assam plays a crucial role in creating artistic creativity. So these are four country road. Thank you. So with this, I wipe out my thing. And thank you all the 